and I know as we're trying to learn, as we're trying to progress as coach developers, coaches, consultants, um, there's many reflections that we have about coaching and the challenges that we face. And many dilemmas that my coaches and I are facing on a daily basis, they happen everywhere. And one of those, and that we're all quite aware, is that coaching is this delicate profession of balancing art and science. And as I like to say, coaching is an art informed by science. The challenge with this art is that we often perform in high pressure environments, and that makes it even more challenging. And really, I think we got the best person to talk to us about this delicate balance of the art of coaching in a high pressure environment, because he has done it at the highest level in football and in one of the greatest leagues on earth, the English League. I'd like to introduce Howard Wilkinson. Howard embarked on a successful managerial career after a respectable playing career as a winger in English football. As a manager, he won the first division championship in 1992 with Leeds United, the final season before the creation of the Premier League, which led him to being inducted into the League Managers Association Hall of Fame. In addition to his accomplishment as a coach, yes, he has more accomplishment than that, Coach Wilkinson holds a PhD in youth development from Sheffield University. He currently acts as chairman of the League Managers Association. So everyone, please join me in welcoming the esteemed Howard Wilkinson to our conversation about the art of coaching. Mr. Wilkinson, welcome to Time Out. Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, and thank you very much uh, for that uh, rather headlight introduction. I hope I can live up to it in the next 10, 15 minutes. A um, couple of things I'd like to say that is in England, in football, the head coach is referred to as manager. So wherever I'm talking about the manager, to, all the, to the rest of the world, as is typical with the English, I'm talking about head coach. And as, as has been said, I'm chairman of the League Managers Association, and we look after the welfare of all the managers in our association, whether they're managing currently or, or not and their families, and we try to attend to their every need, come what may. But I want to talk about, I heard mention earlier on about foot on the ladder. Well, when I'm talking to would-be coaches or would-be managers, I talk to them about, it's not so much a ladder that you're going to get on, it's an escalator that's moving downwards whilst you're trying to climb up it. And there are people ahead of you who don't want you to pass. And there are people coming down who want to shove you, shove you further down. So first time appointments are very, very important. However, it is also a graveyard because since 2012, there's been a 115 first time managers appointed. Just one or two statistics now. And their average age was 41. And during that time, there was a dismissal rate of 82%. In other words, and they lost their job before five years were up. Now, the big figure in management at the start is to get past 75 games. Because if you don't, our research also shows that within five years of being dismissed as a first-time manager, 95% of those people are no longer in football. So first-time management can be a step on the down escalator or it can be a quick visit to the graveyard. Stephen Gerrard, Frank Lampard are exceptions, but they are rare exceptions. So the first job, 75 games, is key. And the reason it's key is because it gets you into, as it were, the circus. One of my pet dislikes about management or coaching uh, is, is something I hear quite often, and it drives me crazy. Winning games is critical. And if you're a first-time man manager, winning games has to be tattooed inside your forehead so it's how to win and one of the things that really bugs me 
or two of the things that really bugs me, is when people talk about or say, everyone, everybody knows how I like to play, which implies some sort of beautiful game. Um, the other thing that also bugs me is people, coaches who talk about my philosophy is. Your job as a manager is to win football man matches. Um, and to do that, it's nothing to do with your philosophy. If we could move to the next slide, please. It's nothing to do with your philosophy. What you are there to do is design a system of play, a way of playing that shoot, suits the strengths of the players at your disposal and hides their weaknesses. That's what you are there to do. And from that point of view, I've just done a simple diagram there, which demonstrates what I'm trying to say. Because on the football or soccer pitch, we divide it into three areas. One's the attacking third, one is the middle third, one is the defending third. Each of those areas are the same size. The two business areas are the attacking third and the defending third. In anything in before that is propaganda. You cannot hurt people until you get inside the attacking third with the ball. And more important than that is the fact that over 80% of goals are scored in an area which is 18 yards by about 14 yards inside that penalty box. And the majority of those are scored in the box from the penalty area to the goal line. So getting into the attacking third is one way, is one thing. How you get there is another. And then being able, one way or the other, to get that, the ball into that danger zone. And therefore, looking at that, what I'm saying is, if we talk about position, I'm talking about the attacking third or the defending third when we lose the ball. And there are two ways of getting into the attacking third at the broad ends of the spectrum, at the very ends of the spectrum. At one end, you've got possession for position. You've got teams, so here in England, Great Britain, like Manchester, Liverpool, Chelsea, etc., who can pass the ball into the attacking third almost at will. That is because they have the players to do that. At the other end of the spectrum, there is another way to get into that attacking third, and that is to play the ball into it, whether it goes to one of us or whether it goes to one of them, if it goes to one of us, great. If it goes to one of ours, at one of theirs, then we need to go close down and get the ball back in there. But it's as simple as that. However, obviously, that's one end and that's the other end. And most of the people will get jobs where the players they've got at their disposal will really narrow down the system they can play and the method they can use with regard to those two objectives, attacking third and then defending our defending third. And that's up to you. That's up to the coach to look at those players and design a system of play that enables those people to maximise their strengths and minimise their weaknesses. You could put the next slide up, please. And to explain what I've just said in, in a more, if you like, understandable way, in order, when I was a manager, head coach, in order to, as it were, reinforce my message that winning football matches matters to me and it matters to them, it matters to me because I might lose my job, it matters to them because the more successful the team is that they play in, then 
the more they earn and the more more importantly the more chance they have of as it were playing in glory games so every now and again i would sit the players 18 of them or 16 of them or 20 of them i would sit them down on a monday and ask them to consider this i would say I want you to think about next Saturday's game, next Sunday's game, next Monday's game, whatever. And then what I'd like you to do is choose a statement. So the statements are, in the next game, I'd like to come off the pitch having played well and enjoyed the game. Or... You can ask the, you can say yes to this statement. In the next game, I want to come off the pitch having won the game. Now, players being players, the first time they hear that question, you will always get someone say, Ah, oh, but I want both. I say, I know you want both, but I want you to choose which one of those matters most at the end of the game to you when he blows that whistle and you turn to walk, run down that tunnel, which one do you want to apply? Have won the game or have played well and enjoyed the game? Now, once it's put like that to them, they always, well, 99% will, will give you the answer individually. I want to have won the game. Okay, I see. So once we've settled that one down, what we're saying is that we, all of us in this room, are committed to playing in next week's game. And there will be times during that game when I have to do things that I might not enjoy as much. But for the benefit of the team, I am willing to make those sacrifices. And also, because winning is that important in the competitive game that we play in, what we're also saying is that prior to that game, again, we'll do everything in our power to prepare ourselves in the best possible way to be successful when that game's over. And I thought, well, how best can I explain this to people if if they're not football people? Well, I had three experiences in the Football League. One was with a club called Knox County Football Club. And I couldn't. I was asked to join them in June. The Football Association who employed me said, no, you can't. It will be January. I I go back to the club and say, I can't join you. I'm sorry. You'll have to look for someone else. And the chairman of that club says, well, we don't want someone else. We want you. And we didn't say when we wanted you. So if you join us in January, fine. So I was able to spend the whole of the first half of that season watching them without any of those players knowing. So by the time I joined them and had gone through the last few games and was preparing for pre-season, I brought them back and they did seven weeks pre-season, which is the longest pre-season they'd ever had. And I introduced them to a system of play that nobody had ever played in England before. We had a a sweeper, played with a sweeper. Um, We passed the ball. We had rotation, movement. The players understood the system, but the most important point about this is that it was the way of playing suited their physical talents and it suited their skill talents. Uh, Ask them to do anything else and it, it wouldn't have suited them. So they were a passing team playing in a very unusual new formation. And in fact, in one of the friendlies, uh, at the end of those seven weeks pre-season, we came off the pitch after the game, having drawn a friendly with Bristol City. And one of their players said, you'll get rele- relegated playing like that. But well, we didn't. 
We were second in the championship. We got promoted and we set off playing the same way. And by December the 5th, when a freeze set in in this country, uh, in England, uh, we were bottom of the first division. And no one played a game then until December, uh, until January, early January, when that cold spell was over. And it wasn't a cold spell, it was a freeze spell. We spent those four weeks, uh, I sat them down, I said, if we keep doing what we've done, we'll keep getting what we got. So we need to change. And the change would be that instead of possession for position, we go to position for possession. In other words, the goalkeeper who last season was encouraged to throw as many as much of the ball as he can. I'm saying we're not going to throw the ball anymore. We, if the keeper gets it, he's going to put it in their half. Uh, we were bottom at Christmas. We finished the season eighth from bottom. And our point tally during the close of the season was over t- twice what it was when we were at the start of the season when we when we were, we finished bottom of the league. Similar thing at Sheffield Wednesday when I joined them from Knox County. Different circumstances this time, and the circumstances were different in, in the sense that I'd got an abundance of centre halves, um, no wide players, etc. So again, I came up with, we're going to play three at the back. We're going to play a high line, two in midfield, three front men. And the work, our work rate is going to have to be unbelievable. But uh, I think, given the players at our disposal, to cut a long story short, we played like that. We were equal top at the end of the season. We were promoted and it carried us into the next two seasons and so as well. Leeds United... In mid-season, I joined them. They're second bottom of the league. Once again, I look at what we've got. And next season, I start off with seven or eight weeks pre-season. And this time, we play uh, with a 4-4-2. Um, and it's half of position for possession. It's half possession for position. Uh, again, because we clear, I'd worked it out and they clearly knew their jobs, we managed to get promoted into the Premier League. The first season in the Premier League, we finished fourth. Our second season, we finished top and won it. So, at three clubs, playing in three, with three different philosophies, if you like, and I hate that word, playing three different systems and three different types of of getting into the attacking third, we were successful. And I'll close with, and that's what I think your job is. And, would you believe there's a gentleman here who you may or may not not know and he says the same with regard to how you chose to play in the sense that he played very differently at Bayern Munich to what he played previously at Barcelona and that was based on the strengths of the players at his disposal thank you thank you very much Howard I mean um for, for those of you that have just met Howard, I had a long conversation with him yesterday, and you can see all the nuances that his experience has brought to his view of the game and, and the beautiful game, if you will, in other sports. And I think it's important that we hear this message that you shared with us and that we see on this last slide there, where you're talking about how, as a coach, we need to really consider our athletes first and then go with our style of play. And I think it, it goes a long way. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have time for any question. But I mean, Mr. Wilkinson, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for reminding us of this important characteristics and explaining to us um, how you got through that. One thing that is important that I'd like everyone to uh, remember and everyone to know um, is that the League Manager Association is going the extra is do, going the extra step to make sure that their managers are well taken care of. Which is, for example, they have a wellness program, they have legal services, they do more. They are more than a union, and I think that's something that's very important. Uh, to Mr. Wilkinson, and I think it can inspire a lot of the uh, things that we could do. It could, it should inspire us to do things differently as well in other places in the world. And as we have people from uh, many continents here today, I think uh, the message is going to hit home. Thank you, Mr. Wilkinson. Thank you very, very much. My pleasure. Happy to be with you. Thank you. Thank you.